Was that Hillsong? Oh, no, I think it was Usher. Oh. I got you right here. I want all my song songs to usher me into the presence of God. Nice. It's the only usher music I'm interested in. You could, uh... I mean, this is this song is biblical when you think about it. <laughs> Praise him. Yeah. I mean, this this song describes our life. Wow, that's powerful. <clears throat> um, Welcome everybody to this week's rendition of. The weekly refresher. This Gar is probably how I miss it. <laughs> so, last time. Welcome to this episode of the weekly refresher. Our last time in refresh, we talked about how Jesus destroyed failure. We started off in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, talking about how Christ causes us to triumph in everything we do. <clears throat> Cut. Oi! Oi! <laughs> We've been talking about on Wednesday nights how Christ is not just the creator, but he is also the destroyer. We started off by talking about how Satan is conquered and how in Christ we're more than conquerors. In the last refresh, we talked about how Christ destroyed failure. We started off by talking about 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Which says, <laughs> we didn't talk about your, your intro. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So that, that verse tells us that God is always leading us in triumph in Christ and then it goes on to talk about how through us he diffuses or makes manifest the knowledge of him. Yeah, and you had a great, great illustration. You were talking about how you normally like all this incense stuff and all this diffusers and feminine scents and everything. And then you, you illustrated that to the, the verse, that you, you linked it to the verse. <laughs> right. I've recently made a purchase of a diffuser. What is that for the audience that's, for, for the male audience, what is that? <laughs> it uh, puts a, a gentle mist into the air that you can scent in a variety of ways. So it's a perfect illustration for this verse because... Right, because that's exactly what he's talking about. Through us, God wants to, to diffuse, to spread, to reveal uh, what it is to know him, what someone looks like that's serving Christ, what a, a man or a woman's life looks like that is walking in fellowship with God, and so when people get around a believer, it's almost like catching a whiff, getting a, some of the a fragrance of what it means to know Jesus. So a lot of times we break this verse up and we talk about God leads us in triumph, we talk about that, and then we talk about He wants to make manifest the knowledge of Him through us, but the two are linked together. So the way, one of the primary ways that God makes manifest the knowledge of Him is by leading us in triumph. So us walking in victory is a revelation to the people around us what it means to follow Jesus, what serving Jesus looks like. And mm. so you can see uh, one of the main strategies of the enemy, if he can keep believers in failure, then simultaneously not only has he made their life miserable, but he's also stopped spreading the revelation of what it means to serve Christ. Right on. Get away from me. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, what do we got? What are you wearing today? Just natural scent. Natural. It smells pretty natural. What you got? Uh, I forget the name of it. It's a new one. Yeah, so I thought it was really good how you linked those two verses, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, that Christ causes us to triumph in all things, and then through us, he diffuses the knowledge of himself. So really, it's not a choice for us to, to choose success or victory. Right, so if, if that's true, and it is, that we, we're supposed to tell people, reveal Christ to the world around us, and this passage tells us that we're supposed to do it by walking in triumph, then yeah, walking in victory is not something that's optional for us. Dude, I think we ate too much bacon. Oh man. <laughs> my whole brain's sluggish. <laughs> I woke up with a pound of bacon in my stomach. 
My house is permanently scented like bacon. <laughs> you know, when you see the, the analogies Jesus repeatedly uses of trees not bearing fruit, branches not bearing fruit, uh, fig trees being cursed, fig trees being uprooted from the garden in Luke chapter 13, why there's such extreme action taken when there's a lack of fruitfulness. So for a fig tree or a fruit branch, whatever it is, success is bearing fruit. If you're a fig tree, failure is not bearing fruit. And every time, there, there's pretty harsh consequences when there's a lack of fruitfulness or a lack of success. Jesus was rough on trees. Or trees that didn't bear fruit. So trees that were right. in a state of failure, then he was rough. So Luke chapter 13, the, the gardener is told that this fig tree, it's been three years, no fruit, get it out of here, cut it right. down. Burn it. Right, completely eliminated, which is, runs parallel to what you see in Deuteronomy chapter seven, when God says, when I bring you into the land that I'm giving you, there's gonna be the Jebusites, the Canaanites, all these other nations greater and stronger than you. I want you to completely wipe them out. I want you to completely destroy them. And then he tells us why. It says, because if you allow them to stick around, eventually they're gonna lead your hearts uh, away from me. And failure does the same thing. That's why you see God taking such a harsh stance against a lack of fruitfulness or so harsh against failure because failure in a believer's life will eventually lead that person's heart away from the Lord. Back to 2 Corinthians that we, we talked about earlier. If he's leading us in triumph, but I'm walking in failure, then my heart is being led further and further away from the Lord. And that's why God takes such a harsh stance against it because it's something that if people allow to linger in their lives will lead them further and further away from the Lord. Man, that's good stuff. And it is crazy how negative people can be. <laughs> that's true. How like sulking in their failure people can be. Right. People like will talk about their failure like God brought them there to <clears throat> teach them something. Just because you learn something in failure doesn't mean that God brought you to that failure. Right, so sometimes people in failure it's a time where they get really hungry and desperate to hear the voice of God, or they finally get quiet and still and, and ask to hear the voice of God. So God will speak to them in those moments and they'll attribute failure with the time that I heard God's voice. But God would speak to them just the same while they're walking in victory and at the top, if they just have that same hunger and desire and, and want to hear his voice there as well. So people will link, oh, God was took me through that to really teach me some things. No, it was just, that's the only time you paid attention and allowed him to teach you some things. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. So all this talk about walking and success, I wanna pose that same question. If God destined us for success and if Christ causes a triumph, victory to victory, glory to glory, all of those things, then why do people still experience failure? What can we do to walk in success? Because it's, it's the word of God that destroys failure. And you see it in passages like Psalm chapter one that talks about if you meditate on my word, day and night, then you'll be like a tree planted by rivers of water bearing fruit in each season. So again, we're seeing a, a tree bearing fruit and says you'll prosper or, you, or you'll succeed in everything that you do. So if you meditate on the word of God, it's the word of God, you bear fruit or you succeed in everything you do. As God's talking to Joshua about leading the Israelites, he tells them the same language, meditate on my word day and night, and then you, only then will you prosper and succeed in everything you do. Over and over again, it's the word of God that destroys failure. So a believer that neglects the word of God, that, that's why they're walking in failure. Are you talking about prosperity? <laughs> yes. Pro You're not one of those prosperity people, are you? <laughs> I'm gonna get a drink of water. <laughs> I'm not even joking. It, it's truly delicious. Sometimes you just need a little Red Bull on the rocks. <clears throat> Especially when you were up at 1 p.m. eating. At 1 a.m. At 1 a.m. <laughs> up at 1 a.m. eating seven pounds of bacon. This, this refresher is brought to you by Red Bull. Bacon. <clears throat> this refresher is brought to you by bacon. Thick cut. Thick cut, ar artery clogging bacon. Smokehouse. See, that's why Red Bull makes such a good sequel to bacon, because it gets your heart pumping. It, you know, just gets those arteries, all the clogging that's taking place because of all that bacon, all those veins that have been, it's just pumping blood, bam, 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 knocking out that plaque. Right, when you understand that 
prospering or prosperity means succeeding or, or moving forward, advancing. If you're people that are anti-prosperity, then they're, they're either pro-stagnation or they're pro-regression because those are the only other two yeah. options. Pro-mediocrity, pro, I ain't going anywhere, doing anything with my life. This is, what, this is how we got to prosperity, man. <laughs> We're at the end of your message, Joshua 1.6. And, that, and, and only then will you prosper in all that you do. So like when you talk about meditation, <laughs> what's proper form? Or, that, that'll work fine. Um, but biblically meditation is, is not, so both those passages we talked about, Joshua chapter one, Psalm chapter one, meditating on the word of God day and night. It's not, yeah, Eastern meditation where you're. Good, because I got worried for a second. Thankfully, this meditation has to do with literally repeating, almost mumbling, just focusing your heart. Instead of just reading a verse and moving on, crossing off your Bible chart and you're, you're done, thinking about it, pondering it, allowing God to, to speak, kind of chewing on it all day long, that's meditating on the Word of God. So then you will prosper in all you do. So when you think about it, Joshua didn't have a chapter and verse to go to for how to defeat Jericho. When you come to a city with walls around it, he didn't go back to Exodus and find a verse that says how to do it. But by keeping the word of God in his heart and his mind, he set himself up for success to know the voice of God. Same thing with David and same thing with us. So the word of God is like a seed. So you put the seed in, it's not the same thing that comes out. It's not just knowing the word of God, it's getting it in you, meditating, allowing God to continue to speak. Talk about Jesus being the word. Word to my word. <laughs> so wait a second, you're talking about how the word of God destroys failure, but we started off by talking about how Jesus is the one that destroys failure and he's the one that, so which one is it? Right, meditating on the word of God, it's the word of God that destroys failure. The Bible says Jesus was the word. And so when you watch Jesus' life throughout the gospels, every time that people were experiencing failure and he arrives on the scene, he destroys failure. Peter can't catch fish all night long. Now that the word of God is involved, they've got more fish than they know what to do. All night long. <laughs> Man, so, so Peter, <clears throat> The woman with the issue of blood. Man brings his boy to the disciples. Can you fix my boy? Can you we deliver can't him? Do it. They we try, can't they fail. Him. Jesus arrives. Success. So Jesus is the word of God, and Jesus destroys failure. And in the life of a believer, us walking, following his leading, allowing him to, to take us from victory to victory, is what shows people around us what, what it is to know Jesus and what serving Jesus looks like. We diffuse the fragrance of the knowledge of him by going from triumph to triumph. It's a good smell too. It really is. Victory, success, winning. It's all we do. We always win, 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 no matter what. Why don't you go ahead and tell them? <laughs> tell the folks. <laughs> one, one of the number one things that keeps people from stepping out and doing what God's called them to do, whether it be a ministry that he's laid on their heart to do, a dream that they've always had, something they've wanted to try, what will keep them bound and keep them stuck is a fear of failure. But if you know that failure's been destroyed, and so it's no longer even an option, I'm meditating on God's word, I'm being led by the word of God. If I know that failure is completely off the table, that gives me boldness and courage to step out. If I know as I step, God's leading me from victory to victory, always leading me in triumph, and for every triumph, I'm diffusing the fragrance of the knowledge of Him, that's freedom to step out and attempt things for God, knowing that failure is not even an option. I'm about to take off doing some laps around this place. Well, as always, thank you for watching, and we hope that it was truly refreshing for you. You can join us on a Wednesday night at 7 p.m., or just keep tuning into these weekly. As always, <laughs> Maybe you what should was with the Red Bull Puppet Show? Well, you're the one that likes puppets. You. Well, do. This is no. This is no puppet. What do you want to do this time? Let me just wave to the folks. I don't know. I think our whole fist bump thing's got something. <laughs> that's the that's the worst part about Red Bull is when it's done.
What do you, why are you still watching this video? It's over. They stay there.